Hi, families. I'm Katie, and I am so happy to have church with you today. Now, let me tell you about one of my favorite things, camping. So when you go out into nature, and you sleep in a tent, and you hike and fish, and you make s'mores, and, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Tell your family what you would take with you if you went camping. Go on, tell them. Oh, did you say a tent? Did you say a sleeping bag? Or what about a canoe or a fishing pole or marshmallows? I just love camping. And I also love the point that we are learning together. Every day, I can trust Jesus. That's it. And now we're going to take some time to watch a Bible story together. And like I said earlier, today's story is about Naboth's vineyard, so let's check it out. It's time for a Bible story. This story is about a guy named Naboth. Oh, bless you. What? No, I, I didn't sneeze. I said Naboth. Oh, uh, allergies getting you, huh? You need a Kleenex, bud? No, I'm not sneezing. I'm saying his name, Naboth. Oh, gotcha. Continue. Naboth lived a long time ago in the land of Israel. He was a godly man that lived a nice, quiet life on some land. Aw, he seems nice. I like this little Nablers guy. You mean Naboth? Yeah, that's what I said. Maberf. I think you're saying it wrong. His name was Naboth. Ah, uh, bless you. Uh, never mind. Naboth lived on a piece of land that was right by the king's palace. Nice. That's a pretty sweet setup. Good location, property value going through the roof. He's living the dream. Well, there is a catch. The king that lived in the palace was named Ahab, and he was not a great dude. And the queen wasn't any better. Her name was Jezebel. Together, they were a pretty dastardly duo. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, so what's the deal? They were just like bad neighbors or something? Always playing loud music, leaving their trash all over the place? Not quite. You see, Naboth had a bit of a green thumb. No, oh, what? Oh, gross! What's wrong with his hand? That's nasty. No, no, no. Uh, that's just a phrase that means he was a gardener. That he liked working with plants. Not like he actually had a green thumb. Oh, uh, okay, good. Because that'd be weird. Naboth had a beautiful vineyard on his land. It was full of lush plants, and Naboth worked really hard to make it very fruitful. His vineyard was so beautiful that it caught the eye of someone very powerful. Let me guess. The Hulk. What? No. Uh, Superman? Wrong again. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. No, it was King Ahab. He saw Naboth's vineyard from his palace and wanted to have it for himself. So, he asked Naboth if he could buy it. But Naboth said no. Huh, how come? That land was given to Naboth as an inheritance, and God told him never to sell it. So, he thanked the king and declined his offer. Okay, no big deal, just gave him the old, it's not for sale. Well, it shouldn't have been a big deal, but it was to King Ahab. He was furious that Naboth didn't give him what he wanted, so he went away pouting and all upset. Wait, like he threw a fit? Like a little baby? Pretty much, yeah. Man, that guy's got a screw loose or something. L let me get this straight, he's a king. Yep. And he lives in a totally awesome palace, mm -hmm. but he's throwing a temper tantrum because he didn't get something? Oh, that sounds like little King Baby needs a little nappy time. You're not wrong. And when Queen Jezebel heard that Naboth wouldn't sell his vineyard to the king, she got super mad too. Seriously? What a couple lame-o babies. Totally. But it gets even worse. Queen Jezebel was so angry about it that she did something really awful. She had Naboth killed so her and King Ahab could steal the vineyard for themselves. No, Naboth, oh, are you for real? Unfortunately, yes. King Ahab and Queen Jezebel let their jealousy consume them, and it eventually led to their own destruction. God had such better plans for them, but because they let their hearts be hardened and gave in to sin, it caused their entire family to be wiped out. Man, that is crazy. Okay, do me a favor. Remind me if I ever see a vineyard that I really like, but I can't have it. Like, not to get super jealous and, like, kill the people that have it to steal it from them, because that is not going to end well for me at all. Um, sure thing. Uh, if that ever happens for some weird reason, I'll totally remind you. Thanks, man. You're the best. The end. King Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard so badly that when Naboth wouldn't give it to him, he started pouting like a little baby. He even refused to eat. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is going to be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now, so let's check it out. Now let's say that I'm going out on a mission. I'm going on a big journey. There would be a few things that I would want to make sure that I take along with me. Like if I was going on a camping trip, I would want to be sure to have the right supplies. A travel backpack, a sleeping bag, 
a water canteen to fill up on the go. A hiking stick. Okay, so I've got my stuff, got what I need for this journey, but I've got to be careful to not add extra supplies. You know, sometimes we want to take extra things with us, but more is not always better. Extra things can actually distract us and keep us from getting where we want to be. Let me show you what I'm talking about. A globe to map out your destination. A tiny backpack for style. A trophy from the third grade, just in case you need to brag. A tennis racket. A battle axe. A power drill. A makeshift helmet to protect against bears. Okay, now this is getting ridiculous. The letter H. Uh, a chair. Okay, guys, I think we're done now. So all of that stuff would obviously slow me down on my journey. So now let's get back to our Bible story. Ahab the king had everything, but to him, he didn't have enough. He wanted more and more and more to the point where he was sick and pouting like a little baby. He was being held back on his journey. As the king, he was supposed to shine the image of God to the people he ruled over, to show his people the true king, God. But that definitely didn't happen. He got super sidetracked on his mission, and he was super distracted by wanting what Naboth had. He totally did not complete his mission. And sometimes, we can be just like Ahab. We let wanting stuff, especially other people's stuff, distract us and keep us from gaining ground on our mission. Often for us, this leads to other sick things, like stealing, disliking others for what they have, being jealous, talking bad about others, making up stories about other people. And all of those are pretty sick, aren't they? So what do we do? How do we stop wanting what others have? If you've been wanting what others have, and it's been making you feel sick, or even do some kind of gross things, I want you to think about Jesus. He's a king, not a king like Ahab. Jesus is the true king, and he had everything in his kingdom, but he gave it all up to be a person like you and I, to die for us so that we could be with God and share in his kingdom forever. If we really see what Jesus has done for us, and we remind ourselves that we have the most valuable thing ever in Jesus, then how could we want what others have? Really, when it comes down to it, it's a trust issue. We've got to decide if we're going to trust Jesus or not. Remember, every day, I can trust Jesus. It all comes down to trust. When we don't get what we want, when we want it, will we still trust Jesus? Or will we be like King Ahab and get so focused on other people's stuff that it makes us sick? What kind of stuff makes you act a little like King Ahab? Is it your friend's games, their clothes, their toys, their shoes, their house? Or is it something else entirely? Remember what Pastor Andrew said, if we really see what we have in Jesus and remind ourselves that we have the most valuable thing ever, how could we want what others have? We already have everything in Jesus and every day we can trust Jesus. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Hang on, I've got a Bible verse to share with you. I'll go first. John 3.16 God loved the world mwah, so much that he gave his one and only son. Wah, wah. <laughs> now I'll say a little bit at a time and you repeat after me. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. John 3.16 God loved the world. Mwah, so much that he gave his one and only son. Wah, wah. <laughs> you got it. That Bible verse reminds me God gave us Jesus, his only son. That's the best gift that we can ever get. Nothing else we want is as good as that. Every day we can trust Jesus. Now I'm gonna leave you with some questions to talk about with your family. Pause the video when you see them and you can have a nice little chat. 
I had a great time having church with you. See you later.